Brisket, to trim or not to trim? That is the question. But what about wrapping or using binders or cooking hot and fast? Do these really matter? There seems to be passionate people about trimming, wrapping, binders, as well as the low and slow cult mythology when it comes to cooking brisket. <laughs> Today we explore brisket without any of these things and I'm gonna share with you all what kind of brisket we ended up with. People say, including myself, that you trim a brisket for more even cooking and a shorter cook time. And some cooks say you must wrap it for a juicy brisket. And let's not forget the binders and the low and slow method and the belief that without these, you cannot get a good bark. In this video, I wanted to put these myths to the test. I smoked this brisket on the ProFit Torpedo at an average of 300 degrees, thinking it would be at least an eight hour cook, but it was done in five and a half hours and the results were even better than I expected. This is the second time that I'm so surprised by a short cook and the great results. I had already convinced myself to be a low and slow guy again, but after these two hot and fast cooks, I don't know. I think you can get an amazing brisket either way. Anyways, let's get fired up and cook a hot and fast, no trim, no wrap, no binder brisket. Vamonos! This is a Creekstone Choice. It's not a prime. They are really, really good briskets. I'm not gonna trim this brisket at all. That's really foreign to me. It really is because my whole life, I've been cooking for 30 years, I've always trimmed briskets. Everybody that I know trims briskets, but I get some guys on, on social media that say, don't trim the brisket. So I'm not gonna trim it today, just to see what happens. Smokey Joe's Pit Barbecue out of El Paso did one and uh, turned out good. And so I thought, you know, that's a kind of a cool experiment. I'm gonna give it a try because I have never in my life cooked a non-trimmed brisket ever. Now this brisket has a real deep little gash here of fat. It's not into the meat, but they cut a big piece of fat out of there. Yeah. This brisket I've been making for several years. It was definitely the brisket rub that I was using on the competition trail as my base. It is a salt, pepper, garlic, and a few other special ingredients. Everything that I did in the competition world was to impress the judges and to win competitions. This brisket rub is no exception. I'm going to season it nice and heavy. I am going to cook it fat side up and I'm going to cook it no wrap. I'm not going to wrap it at all. I'm just going to leave it in the smoker and let it do its magic and we'll see what happens. Now, one of the things that, that people are going to ask is how much do you use? Well, you're watching me. I like to put a couple of different layers, pat it down. First the light coat and then I'll pat it down a little bit. Then I'll come back with two or three more coats, maybe four. Just depends on how much I'm actually laying down at the time. All right, we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna season the other side. And on the fat side up here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Just give it a nice even coat as much as possible. Pat it down a little bit and then come back. Lay another layer down. Give it another pat. All right, my friends, we've got all the seasoning that we can get onto this brisket. I got my pecos cup, gonna take another couple of swigs, and then we're gonna go get fired up, light the pit, and start smoking. I went ahead and put it on one of these little uh, racks. These work really great, they're disposable. I bought them on Amazon. It's really great for sliding the brisket around, moving it around once you got it inside the grill. We're running about 250 degrees right now. I'm gonna try to get it up around 300 here shortly. I had kinda choked it down. But we're gonna get the temp up, run around 300 today. Point towards the heat. I've got my fire going over there with a little oak. Yeah, it fits great there. Perfect, right in the middle. I'm gonna slide that back in. All right, smack dab in the middle. Close the lid. We're smoking, baby. Been about two and a half hours. We have not done anything to the brisket. I'm fixing to spritz it with a little bit of water and apple cider vinegar. That's all it is, about a 60-40. Let's take a look at it. Check it out, I put some ribs on. This is for lunch. The brisket will be for Din Din. Here we go. It's looking really mighty nice, mighty pretty. I'm, it doesn't necessarily need a lot of spritz. You can see it's pretty moist anyway, but um, it's looking pretty good. Looking good, looking good. All right, we'll leave it there. We've been cruising at about 300 degrees or so. We're gonna keep cruising at about that same temperature for the next hour or two, and then I'm gonna crank it down to about 250 till it gets done done. So we're good to go. We'll put that back in there. We're gonna take one last look at this brisket. It's actually done. <laughs> Blows my mind. It's, it's been five and a half hours approximately. I really, really, really thought this was gonna be an eight or a 10 hour cook. 
It's at 203 degrees. It is time to pull that brisket. I'm going to put it in the camber. I do think in the next few minutes like when I pull it out, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it in butcher paper and let it sit in the camber for a couple hours. Look at how soft it is. Oof, look at that. Wowzer gazowzer. I did not expect that at all. Not, <laughs> not in five and a half hours. Beautiful bark, gorgeous color. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Gorgeous bark, five and a half hours. Now time for a two hour rest. It's already pretty, completely jiggly, look at that. Y'all know the chef always has to have privileges, so he gets to get a taste test. Just a little piece. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's wrap this bad boy up, get him in the camera. Fat side up. Now we're talking. Fat side down, fat side up. <laughs> All right, to the camera we go. All right, my barbecue loving friends, we are back in the kitchen now, finally. It was a total cook time of five and a half hours, give or take a couple of minutes. We rested it for two and a half hours. This is our no trim, no binder, no wrap brisket. We wrapped it just for the rest and I put it in the camera. Let's go ahead and open it up. And even like that with nothing else in there and even not wrapping it, it is very, very tender, very tender. We're going to start slicing right now and see what we have. This is a beautiful brisket. This is a creek stone and we didn't trim anything. So I know it's going to have a little excessive fat. There's a very good possibility that because we only cooked it for five and a half hours, all the fat that should have rendered out might not have rendered out, but you can always trim the fat off, right? So it's okay. Let's go ahead and make our first cut here. This thing's soft. Now, it did cook really fast because I was cooking pretty hot. How's that? Yeah, it's pretty moist, pretty juicy. Oh man, look at that. That's very, very moist right there. Yeah, it looks good to me. Really good. I'm not even squeezing anything. It has a nice little smoke ring down there. Oh man, look at that. I didn't trim any fat whatsoever and it did have a very thick fat cap up here. Smoke rings don't mean anything for flavor. It doesn't do anything to the meat. But man, it sure does look cool, don't it? <laughs> when you have it. A little bit here. Feels a little firm on the bottom. I left my charcoal basket out today and I just did it the old school way without a basket. And then later on, I slid a little bit of charcoal up under the brisket because I like that drum style flavor. When I cook briskets on a drum, it's kind of like a smoky grilled flavor. And I really like that flavor. So it might've got a little firm from the heat underneath but it's not burned or anything. It's actually pretty nice looking. All right, but even over here on the flat, look at that flat. Look how shiny and moist that flat looks. That looks really, really nice. I like to cut this first cut a little bit wide so it doesn't fall over. It keeps all the other slices together, keeps them from falling over. All right, here we go. This is just the flat. We'll cut the point here in just a minute. All right, let's see one more time here. This could have cooked a little bit more, but look, I'm not even trying hard. Comes right apart. This part's a little bit firm. I could feel a little firmness underneath. That could be from the direct heat, but it got to 203 degrees internal. I didn't want to push it any further than that because what happens, and I've done it in the past, I'm sure it's happened to a lot of people, once you get past a certain temperature, it starts to overcook and then you dry the meat out. And this is not dry at all, as y'all can see. It's super, super moist. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. That is super good. Super good. The flavor, 100% on point. Speaking of the point, let's cut some slices out of the point here. Everybody likes to cut the point right down the middle too. Y'all remember there was a big gash here in the morning? In, on the fat. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut it right across there. Now that was soft. Wow, there you go. That looks really good, super moist. Beautiful smoke ring down here. The point is really big, looks really good. And uh, as you can see, we do have a little bit of fat here. This had a lot of fat on top. That's just the way the brisket came. I didn't wanna trim anything off of it just for the sake of the this brisket test. All right, here we go. Now we're talking. Yeah. Now I am gonna take a little bit of this fat off just for the taste test. I don't wanna eat too much fat, 
But man, it sure does look good. That point is really soft. Look at that. Got to take a bite. Mm, 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 mm. That's good. Very good. Mm -hmm. Even though I trimmed the fat off, the meat has flavor way down in there. I seasoned the meat side, flipped it over, seasoned the fat side. If I had trimmed the fat way, way down where it was very thin, we would have had even more flavor. We're super grateful, super thankful to each and every one of you guys that follow our videos, that share our videos. We really enjoyed this cook today. We enjoyed making this video for you guys. We're super excited about getting this brisket rub out to you guys into the marketplace. You're going to love it. I promise you that. As much as you loved our Wow and OG, you're going to love this brisket rub. It is super delicious. You can go to pitmaster.us. That is where you're going to find our brisket rub as well. If you want to up your barbecue game and cook briskets that look this beautiful and that are this delicious and tender, go to pitmasterclass.us. We have a brisket masterclass in there, a complete backyard masterclass, and a complete competition barbecue class. We'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Boom! It is a great, great brisket rub. It did help me win a lot of barbecue competitions, including the best brisket cook in Texas award back in 2016, I would think it was. I think it was this trophy, if I remember correctly. I'm so proud of this one that I keep it in the kitchen. But anyway, you can see there, it is the Texas Barbecue Points Chase first place brisket Arnie Segovia Smoking Lone Star. This was in 2016, I believe, if I remember. Yeah, there it is, 2016. That was the last year or second to last year that we pretty much competed full time. We were doing about 40 events a year, 45 I think that year or the year before. And then the next year we slowed it down and then we took a break. This brisket rub is what helped me win this trophy right here. So folks, I promise you're gonna enjoy it. I'm not gonna use any binder. I am gonna use some fuel for me. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, it's about a 12 pounder. <laughs> so I'm gonna trim it up. So I'm not gonna trim it up. <laughs> so I have to like get on my tippy toes to look over here. Oh man, look at that. That's very, very moist right there. Oui, oui, oui. You're gonna make a mess. Gonna make a mess for Terry. Get that out of the way so that I don't get brisket rub in it. Although that might be pretty good. 